Okay, so let's finish this activity. I'm going to speed through the process of configuring R3 so we can get to the ISP router. So I'll open up R3, and we'll just open this up, stretch it out, and begin configuring here. That turns on unicast routing and sets the host name. And now we need to do the interfaces. So interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1, I believe. Let's see. That's correct. And it's not the DCE. And we'll set the IPv6 address for the link local. It's the third router, so it gets FE80 colon colon 3 and then link dash local. Then I'll do an up arrow and we'll set the global unicast address. It's the fourth subnet and the second host in that subnet. We can double check that if we want, but I believe that's correct. Uh, it says here incomplete command. What did I forget? Ah, I forgot my slash 64 network prefix length. All right, that looks good. And then a no shut command. Okay, that turns it on. Let's also, while we're here, turn on the RIP NG routing protocol, so IPv6. Let me back out of this so you can see the command better. IPv6, RIP, and then RIP1 is the name of the process, and enable. So that looks good. And then once again, subnet 4, host 2, we can always double check that. You can see it's the fourth subnet, host number two, and this is the interface we just configured. So that looks really good. Time for the gigabit interface. So I'll just do an up arrow and set the, there we go for the link local, colon colon three. Once again, you can see right here on the side that R3 gets the colon colon three link locals. And then the the global unicast will be subnet 5, host 1, and then no shut. And then I also need to give it the rip rip1 enable command to turn on the rip routing protocol. So now that's set. So I believe that's all I need to do on that router. I do need to save my configuration. And I'm not positive that I saved the configuration on R2, so I'm going to go back and do that as well. Okay. Forgot a space. There we go. All right, so R3 has been configured now, and all we need to do now is configure the ISP router. Now, the ISP router is going to be pretty easy. We just set the host name, turn on the IPv6 routing protocol, and configure this one interface here. It does not run the RIPNG routing protocol, but it is going to need a summary route because that's in the instructions over here that on the ISP router we need a summary route out of the serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 interface, meaning this interface right here, to reach all of these subnets, the DA colon 1, the DA colon 2, the DA colon 3, the DA colon 4, and the DA colon 5, all of these subnets in one summary route. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So we'll go into the router and we'll quickly run through the easy stuff that we've done before. So enable. We have to set the host name too. We're going to set it to ISP and then IPv6 UNI tab unicast routing interface serial 0 slash 0 slash 1. He is the DCE, so we'll have to set the clock rate. I almost forgot that. There we go. And IPv6 address. Now, for the link local address, let's take a look here. The ISP is going to have a slightly different um, number for its link local, so it'll be FE80 colon colon C, I like to put in the caps there, 
and then link dash local. All right, there it is. And then for the global unicast, 2001 colon db8 colon c cd1 colon let's see here c and it's one okay so c colon colon one slash 64 and then a no shut command all right so now that serial interface is up now it's not going to participate in the RIP routing protocol, RIPNG, but it does need that summary route. So we need to have a summary route that summarizes, first let me exit out of here, all of the networks. And I've put that process to create a summary route to summarize all these networks into a document here that we can take a look at. So the first thing you want to do is make a list of the subnets that you want to summarize. And so you can see I wrote out the subnets here that I want to sub that I that I want to summarize the one the two the three the four and the five in step two what I've done is taken those subnets and I've decompressed the IPv6 so I've written them out basically in long format and what I'm interested in is the subnet portion of the hex tets so in IPv6 we call these hex tets in IPv4 they were called octets now these are called hex tets to show that these are hex characters right each character is a hexadecimal character and that means that each character or each number is worth four bits so one hex character is the equivalent of four bits in binary so you can see here that what I've done is I've taken this one two three fourth hex tet and I've written all of the fourth hex tets in binary down here and you can see that right here so one two three four and five and you can see that that's a one that's a two that's a three that's a four and that's a five so this portion right here is this character right here remember I said that each one of these characters is worth four bits in binary so I can divide them up right here and you can see how I did that so there's the four characters and the four characters all right and we'll just lay that out here so that you can see it nice and easy so that is a 0001 or 0001 0002 and all that and so then to find the summary address what you do is look for the last common bit just like you did with IPv4 summary addresses so if we look for the last common bit we see it's actually this one right here zero 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 all of these subnets share a zero in right here but when you get over one these have a one here and so those are not common right zero 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 one one so this is the last common bit and now all we have to do is count over so we say okay this is four hex characters or 16 bits binary so 16 32 48 and now we just count over count over 48 49 50 51 52 53 54 55 56 57 58 59 60 61 so this is the 61th bit or 61st bit rather and so the summary address will be 2001 colon db8 colon da colon colon slash 61 and what this will do is since this bit is essentially in the eighths place right the ones place the twos place four and eight this will summarize subnets zero all the way up to seven so this would work for subnet right here all the way up let's copy that if we had one it should summarize all the way up to subnet 7 so that would be a 7 so it'll cover subnets 1 2 3 4 and 5 easily because it goes from 0 all the way up to 7 so that's what we're going to use for our summary address so we'll go back in to the ISP router here we're in global configuration mode and we'll type IPv6 route 
And then I'll just paste that in there. So we're going to go to the 2001 db8 colon da colon colon slash 61 out of the serial 0 slash 0 slash 1 interface. And there is our static route, our summary route. So now the ISP router is finished. We just do a control C and a copy run start to save our configuration. And we should be able to ping this interface now from PC1. So I'll go over here to this last PC over here in the network, open up the command prompt, and let's see if we can ping the host. 2001 colon db8 colon, let's see here, which one was it? Ah, cd1 colon c colon colon 1. And you can see that I'm able to ping the ISP router. So obviously it's working. Um, the ISP router is able to send the echo reply back to me. So we have uh, communication across the network. I can also look at, let's see here, the PT activity here and check our results. You can see that we got 100% completion on the activity. And if we check the results and go to the assessment items, you can see all of the items and all the configurations that we were able to complete correctly and we got a 57 out of 57. If you were one of the first people to download this PKA file off my website, the first time I did this, I uh, mistakenly put the summary route as a slash 60 instead of a slash 61. So if you were one of those people and you have that early file that I made and you're not getting 100% on the activity, just try changing the summary route from a slash 61 to a slash 60 and it'll register 100%. To get rid of the route in Packet Tracer, all you do is put a no in front of the IPv6 route and that will remove the route from the routing uh, from the configuration file and then you can put the route in again and instead put a slash 60.